That may be the last time I ever real mow my lawn. What's going on everybody? Chuck here and I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. What if I told you that real mowing isn't all it's cracked up to be? Or maybe it's gonna make your mowing experience even more awesome. Well, in this video, I sort of wanna go over three reasons why I think real mowing is the absolute worst. But then I have some friends of mine, some fellow lawn enthusiasts that's gonna come on and tell you why real mowing is absolutely amazing. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say that real mowing is just a fad or the latest craze because real mowing has been around since like 1868, but it just seems like everybody is real mowing these days. Now I do have to admit though that short cuff turf looks really, really awesome. That's why golf courses, especially the more upkept ones, look as nice as they do. But here's the thing about real mowing, it's expensive. So the first reason why real mowing isn't all that it's cracked up to be is because real mowing is expensive. Now, even the used market for real mowers is absolutely insane. Now, if you have a smaller lawn, maybe 5,000 square feet or less, you can get away with using something like a 20 inch McLean like I have, but anything bigger than that, you want a bigger mower, otherwise it's gonna take you forever. Now here where I real mow my backyard, which is Bermuda, it's about 3,500 square feet, somewhere around there, and it may be, if I keep up with it, which is another topic here in a minute, you know, it may take me 45 minutes or something like that with a 20 inch. If I had a 25 inch or a 27 inch uh, real mower, it'd be a lot less time. Now, if you really want to think about it, getting a push rotary mower like a Toro from Home Depot, you're looking at spending maybe 400 bucks, much less on the used market. Now, you could go and save a little bit of money and do a push reel mower, but that is exhausting and I'm not about to do that. One last thing, repairs and maintenance on your reel mower are way more expensive than that on a rotary mower. If you damage your reel, you're looking at spending hundreds of dollars to replace it. Just sharpening your reel is more expensive where you can go get a sharpened blade from Home Depot for maybe 20 bucks or whatever, or you can just sharpen them yourself. Or doing that on a reel mower is a lot more challenging to do and should probably be done by a professional. The number two reason why real mowing isn't all it's cracked up to be is that you will find every single imperfection in your lawn, every nook and cranny, every bump, every pebble, real mowing will reveal it all. Now, while it actually looks better now than it did maybe a month and a half ago, through real mowing and erosion, sort of this line here, I'm gonna put some B-roll, was just full of rocks and pebbles and just absolute junk. The only reason I found that out is because of real mowing. Now your lawn doesn't have to be perfectly level to real mow your lawn, especially if you have a roller in the front of it, it kind of glides over a lot of those imperfections, but having a level lawn does make the real mowing experience that much more enjoyable and it just keeps things looking neat and tidy. Now, before I get to the number three reason of why real mowing is blah, why not go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you don't mind, because that would mean a whole lot to me and I thank you all so very much for watching up to this point. The number three reason why real mowing is meh is that it will take up more of your time. There's a reason why golf courses and the nicest real mowed lawns look the way they do, and that's because a lot of time and effort are poured into them. Unless you use a plant growth regulator with Teenex being the most popular option, which also costs $140 per gallon, be prepared to mow your lawn at least two to three times a week. If you try to real mow your lawn once every seven days without the use of a plant growth regulator, you're gonna have to double cut your lawn every every single time, which is something that I tend to get caught up in all the time. I'll mow it once with a rotary mower and then I'll mow it again with the real mower just to make sure I don't shock the grass. Regular, simple tasks like adjusting the height of cut takes more time. Where with your rotary mower, you have to mess with those little tabs on the wheels that kind of hurt your fingers. That's simple enough. 
inconvenient, but simple enough. But when it comes to a real mower, now the McLean doesn't fall into this thing, so it's actually quite easy to adjust the height of cut on a McLean. But if, like with a Toro Greensmaster, you actually need tools to make very small adjustments to the height of cut. Now, before we move on to the joys of real mowing, I'm gonna give you a freebie reason why real mowing isn't made for everybody. And that's because it's not all inclusive. Not all grass types can be real mowed while all grass types can be cut with the rotary mower. The best ones to mow with a real mower are your warm season grasses other than St. Augustine and all of your cool seasons other than tall fescue. Everything else tends to do pretty good with a real mower. Now, even with everything I just said, bashing real mowing, I absolutely love real mowing my Bermuda grass. It's just a completely different sensation than with a rotary mower. Even with my old grump of a mower being the John McLean, it's still just such a nice way. It just glides over the turf, especially when you keep up with your mowing, it just sort of glides over everything. That scissor cut is so nice. And in my opinion, low cut, well cut manicured turf just looks so much better. Now I could go on and on and on why I really do like real mowing. However, I think it'd be more meaningful if you hear from others that have been doing it a little bit longer and sort of share the reasons why they like real mowing. So I asked three of my fellow content creators here on the lawn tubes to share their joys for real mowing. I got into real mowing solely out of self interest to me because I'm selfish. But what I didn't realize is the kids, the boys, they absolutely love a low cut manicured turf and all their friends do too. So my backyard has now become the soccer field, the football field, the let's just go play in a nice lawn field and they love it. And so for that, I continue to do it and love it. What's happening, Chuck? There are so many reasons I absolutely love real mowing my grass. If you think about it, the best grass you're gonna find anywhere, whether it be golf courses, professional sports fields, they all cut their grass with real mowers. And there's a few reasons why. One, you get an amazing cut quality. It's basically like cutting your grass with a pair of scissors. When that reel hits the bed knife and cuts off that grass, it's perfect. So the end of the grass blade stays nice and dark green, which makes the whole lawn look beautiful. Second reason, you can cut your grass nice and short without scalping anything. It's amazing to have your own lawn at your own house. Like my backyard, I have a half inch and people see that and they're like, is this real grass? I've never seen anything like that before. Hey, Sunny Bermuda here, coming to you on this beautiful sunny day. Out here in the yard, I just got a scalp in a couple days ago, waiting for it to come in and green up. I want to share with you some ways I, or some reasons why I love to real mow. First, I find it completely and utterly relaxing especially in the evenings when I get off work, the sun's starting to set behind these trees over here, I cast a shade and I just like a relaxing mow in the shade. Nothing beats that. Yeah, I know this is sunny, Bermuda. The sun gets really hot in central Alabama here. It's the second reason why I love to real mow is I love a smooth carpet-like yard. I mean, you can get a nice yard with a rotary mower, don't get me wrong, but a real mower really will just shave it down flush I'm not real big on stripes. I, I like a more of a carpet look when I walk out the front door. I like to look in this front yard and, and see a nice flush, plush green carpet. A third reason I enjoy real mowing is I love to come out in the hot sunny days, relax by the pool and look over here and see plush green carpet grass over here. While the kids are playing on the swing sets, just having a good time grilling out on the grill and just enjoying the summer day and chuck thank you for having us on your channel look forward to seeing you guys in the yard have a great day so there you have it three reasons why real mowing is the absolute worst and i don't recommend it for any of you but then also many reasons why real mowing is an absolute joy I wanna say thank you to Kyle at Lake House Lawn Care. Thanks to Sunny Bermuda and thanks to Mike 
real low dad for taking time out of their day to create those clips for you all to enjoy. Thank you all for tuning into this video. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That would mean the world to me. But here I have several videos I'm about to film because I'm actually getting ready to go on vacation. And then after I get back from vacation, there'll be one week before 4th of July. And I want to make sure that this backyard is looking premium for my 4th of July celebration. But anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day and God bless. If you're still watching to this point, thank you so much. You can actually turn the video off here if you want because there's no more lawn care stuff after this comment. The reason why it looks kind of the way it does a lawn that is, is because that B-roll you watched was me scalping the Bermuda down. So that's why it looks the way it looks. Now, no more lawn content. Um, this is actually gonna be off the cuff. I don't have a plan for this, but this is something that I wanna start doing at the end of all my videos. And so backstory real quick, uh, I am in a group chat on Instagram with some other lawn tubers and just content creators who are dads and man of, men of faith. And we, you know, we talk and we share different things. And so recently one of the guys shared a video from a channel called Think Media. And Think Media, um, I didn't know this about him, but he's apparently a Christian. But he was talking about like the three main things about YouTube channels. You know, what is your YouTube channel about? How are you gonna differentiate yourself or your channel from other similar channels? And what's your why? Why are you creating content? Why are you picking up a camera and filming? And I always thought it was just cause I, I liked working in the lawn and I like making videos, put two and two together, bada bing, bada boom. And while that's great, and I think it's a great why if that is your why, but I wanna start creating something more of a community, which I think a lot of creators say, but I wanna provide some sort of um, value and hopefully make an impact to you all. And um, while I can't sit here and give everybody a bunch of money and um, give away a bunch of free products and all this kind of stuff, something that is near and dear to my heart and I believe actually works is the power of prayer. Uh, I am a Christian. I don't know how often I've talked about that on the channel. And if I haven't, that's a shame on me. I shouldn't have done. That. I know I did a pray and spray video last or a couple years ago, um, but I don't think I talk about it very much. And that's a shame on my part as a Christian. I shouldn't shy away from my faith like that. Jesus never did. And not that I'm Jesus, but if I'm a Christian and we're supposed to be like Christ, I shouldn't shy away from who I am and what my beliefs are. So I know there's lots of different types of people. And when I say types, I should say it. There's lots of different people with different uh, backgrounds and faith. Uh, there may be Christians that watch my channel. There may be atheists and agnostics. There may be different religions that watch my videos. I personally don't know. But what I do believe is that even if you are someone that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, you don't believe in the power of prayer, I think the key thing to know is that if I'm praying for you all, it's something that I hold near and dear. And so even if you don't necessarily believe it, it should still come off as like, hey, I'm spending my time to think about you and pray for you. And that's what I hope comes across here. And I'm not trying to rub anybody the wrong way. I just wanna share a personal part of my life with you all. And that's just with the power of prayer. And so at the end of all my videos, I'm gonna say a quick prayer for maybe it's specific content creators or people that I know, the world around me, I don't know what I'm gonna pray about. But what I do wanna offer is prayer requests. And so I'm not gonna put my personal email because I don't want to get lost in all my other stuff, but I do have a dadding all day email that I'm gonna put down below uh, in the description. Um, in the description, sorry, my wife was trying to tell me it's time to go. Uh, in the description, um, and that way you can send me your prayer request and be completely confidential between me and you. You can actually hide your, not hide your email, but you don't have to say, hey, this is so-and-so. You can just have a generic email that I don't know who it is and just say, give me a prayer request because I'd love to pray for you and whatever you have going on um, because this world is crazy, lots of negativity. And so I just wanna share something um, near and dear to my heart with you all. So like I said, I'm gonna do this at the end of my video. The prayer requests, by the way, are not gonna be things I pray about on the channel. I will do those in my private time. Um, just so like I said, I don't wanna share everyone's 
uh, stuff with my audience because that's not that's not cool. Um, but I do want to pray for you. So if you do have prayer requests, email me in um, the email uh, that's listed down below and I'd love to pray for you. So real quick, I'm going to end this video on a prayer. And like I said, I want to do this from now on. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe from me or not watch the videos. I understand that it is what it is, but this is just something I want to do for you all. So I'm going to pray real quick and then uh, I'll be done. So dear Lord, I just thank you for giving me the ability to have this platform, even though I don't have the largest audience in the world or the largest view counts or subscribers or, or whatever, but you're giving me an opportunity to do this and forgive me for not taking advantage of this opportunity uh, to share your love uh, with my audience, God. So I just pray for everyone that's watching this video, whether it's just a hundred people or a million people or what anywhere in between there, God. I just pray for every single one of them in whatever their life situation is. Uh, if they're doing awesome, thank you, God, for that blessing. If they're struggling, I just pray that you uh, give them the strength to carry on and push through. And if there's a specific need, God, that you provide that need, whatever it is, no matter how big or how small, because I do believe, and you have said in the Bible, that the faith of a mustard seed can move mountains, God. So there's nothing that is insurmountable to you or for you. So I just pray over my audience, and if they're going through something, God, that either you put people in their path that can help them out and show them the way and get them out of this situation, or you just give them the strength to do it on their own, Lord. I thank you for all that you do for us, God, even the things that we may not count as blessings, but hey, we're all breathing breath. We're all living life. We're all loving working in the lawn, God. So even some lawns that don't look as good, we still thank you for giving us the opportunity to share this passion with each other. And I just thank you for all you do for us, God, in your name. Amen. Thank you all so much for watching. Like I said, I'm gonna do this from now on at the end of all my videos. So anyway, I will see you in the next video. God bless.